My name's uh, Ian Schaefer. I'm the founder and CEO of an interactive marketing agency uh, called Deep Focus. Uh, we are focused on driving engagement, um, not only with brands, but between people at scale. Um, we've got lots of clients in the entertainment space, lots of clients in the brand space, um, but today we're going to be talking about cats. Um, my second favorite topic. So, uh, if this, okay. So, we've got some assumptions that we're going to make. Um, <laughs> That's Spandau Ballet, because basically, I always find a way to get them into a presentation, and um, we know this much is true. Okay. Um, we, know that, uh, we know that your target audience, it's before lunch, I had to throw some of that in there. Uh, your target audience we know is 35 plus. We know that they are an empty nester or probably have school age kids in the home. Um, we know that they are value shoppers. Um, we know that they're also probably casual gamers. Um, we also know that there's another bullet point in here, that they're moderate users of social networking sites as well. So taking all this stuff into consideration, um, you know, now we know a little bit about the, the target audience. Um, I think it's time to look at um, the state of the internet. Um, and it starts with one simple fact. 75% of the content of the internet is about cats. Okay, so it's not like exactly true. Um, but if you spend enough time on the internet, you'll start to feel that way. Um, so the question is, how do you own that? Um, does anyone know what this chart is? <laughs> Doug, do you know what this chart is? Uh, I don't. Okay, so this, this chart um, actually shows uh, the growth rate of one particular account uh, on Twitter. Um, it's not Oprah. Yeah, it is Sockington the cat. Sockington the cat has at last tally uh, about 509,000 followers on Twitter. Um, that is without an outdoor campaign or a challenge to CNN. Um, so Sockington basically uh, is the pet of some dude and he is out there somewhere um, letting his cat Twitter all day. Um, <laughs> So Sockington tells the world you know, about what he's thinking, what he's doing, about which type of catnip is best, um, about uh, you know, how he's playing with the ball and how it's evaded him under the sofa, things like that. Um, as a matter of fact, Sockington, and it, as luck would have it, yesterday got his own little piece in TechCrunch um, about the fact that has Twitter finally um, collapsed upon itself uh, when, a, when a cat has 500,000 followers. Um, I think that's part of the magic of Twitter. So, um, you know, one of the things here is that, yes, so in fact, one of the most followed people on Twitter is not a person at all, it is a cat. Um, if you're familiar with the uh, LOL cat or LOL cats phenomenon, um, you know, there's a, there's a site that many of you probably know called uh, ICanHasCheeseburger.com, um, where about uh, 500 photos like this um, with a, a very nice caption in impact font um, are uploaded every day. Um, community votes on them. Um, it's probably one of the most often digged type of images, or Doug, Doug, you know John, Doug? All right, Doug, uh, images uh, on the web. So things like this. So this is, this is all out there making up that uh, hypothetical 75%. Um, you know, on, on a site like fark.com, which again is a huge traffic driver for lots of sites, every Saturday is Catterday. So every Saturday, you know, this is following along the same lines as I can has cheeseburger thing. You know, people are posting uh, information and photos about cats, usually humorous in nature. Um, and then you've got things like this um, that can only happen on the internet. <laughs> so <laughs> this is Zen. Um, so all right. So needless to say, you know, she loves meow mix actually, which is which is a nice segue, um, you know, into what I'm about to talk about. Um, so. The best way to think about this, with all this stuff going on on the internet about cats, what would Meow Mix do in this situation? You're presented with this opportunity right now to embrace catness on the internet and own it for yourself. Um, and this is something that can only be done in, uh, in the social web. So really, if we're going to set forth a strategy, the right strategy will give consumers the second, third, and fourth degrees. And by that, I mean think beyond that first degree of a brand or an impression uh, or an ad. Um, and instead, thinking about what happens after that. If someone interacts with something that's powered by a brand, think about what happens between the consumers that automatically see what that person's just did, whether that's an active share of content or a passive one through a newsfeed. Um, also, 
we should bring consumers closer to each other via Meow Mix. So instead of you know, trying to have all these conversations with consumers, which is, by the way, very difficult to scale, power conversations between them. Um, we want to leverage platforms, not just websites. So everything out there, yes, you've got portals, yes, you've got editorial content, but you've also got social networks and video sharing platforms um, that, as, as John usually eloquently very much loves to say, that platforms are, in a sense, the new website, and I agree. Um, <clears throat> want to enhance, not interrupt experiences. Don't focus on the floating ad, don't focus on expandable ads. Basically make experiences that consumers are already, have, uh, already having and having with each other better. Um, also, um, lead to a commitment of lots of little affordable experiences that consistently, consistently reinforce the Meow Mix brand and personality. Um, and of course, uh, typo, damn it. Uh, work off of a statistical modeling of what makes a consumer more likely to make a Meow Mix purchase. So it's very important to say, all right, so we've got all these experiences going on out there on the web, all this consumer behavior that's going on, whether we uh, power it or not. What experiences make somebody more likely to purchase a Meow Mix product, whether that's online or off? Um, so if you address all this stuff, you will um, be presented with um, you know, the right social strategy. Um, and there are two ways to look at this. You've got the, the site, the Mitsubishi site, like John says, and you've got everything that's happening. We call it the dot-com and not-com world. So we're focusing on the not-com part of this. So social media hubs, content partners, promotional hubs, blogs, social networks, all this stuff is feeding activity. Um, it can be feeding activity around the brand, while of course driving traffic back to the official website, which is a great cross-promotional tool. 